I'm often asked, how did utilization-focused evaluation get started? It started with the personal factor, the discovery of the personal factor and its implications. The personal factor is the fundamental utilization-focused evaluation principle of identifying and engaging with the primary intended users of the evaluation. It's no exaggeration to say that the personal factor is the foundation upon which the house of utilization-focused evaluation was built. So let me take you back to 1975 when it all began. I was director of the Evaluation Methodology Training Program at the University of Minnesota with doctoral students, postdoctoral students, and participants. And to pull that program together, we decided to undertake a study of use. We were able to identify a sample of 20 federal health evaluations where we interviewed program directors, the overall director of the funding agency, and the evaluators to find out what had happened to those evaluations. That interview data became the basis for the personal factor. And it's important enough that I think it's worth taking you through that analysis to appreciate the importance and emergence of the personal factor and its implications for utilization-focused evaluation. In that interview, we had identified a number of factors that, from the literature, were expected to influence whether or not an evaluation was used. Methodological quality, methodological appropriateness, timeliness, lateness or on-time findings, positive or negative findings, surprise of findings, whether the evaluation was central or, uh, or focused on peripheral program objectives, the presence or absence of related studies, political factors, decision-maker evaluator interactions, and resources available for the study. We went through each of those uh, criteria and possible factors during the interviews and then asked respondents to, quote, pick out the single factor you feel had the greatest effect on how this study was used. And these are the kind of answers we got. I would rank as the most important factor this division director's interest, his interest in evaluation. Not all managers are motivated toward evaluation. The single most important factor that had the greatest effect on how the study got used was the principal investigator. If I have to pick a factor, I'll pick people any time. That it came from the office of the director. That's the most important factor. The proposal came from the office of the director. It had his attention, and he was interested in it, and he implemented many of the things. Another one. Well, I think the answer there is in the qualities of the people for whom it was made. That's sort of a trite answer, but it's true. That's the single most factor, important factor in any study now that's utilized. Another decision maker. Probably the single factor that had the greatest effect on how it was used was the insistence of the person responsible for initiating the study that the director of the agency become familiar with the findings and arrive at judgment on it. Another decision maker. The most important factor was the real involvement of the top decision makers in the conceptualization and design of the study and their commitment to the study. When asked to identify the one factor that's most important in whether a study gets used, an evaluator was quite eloquent about his 30 years of experience and what he had learned. Quote, the most important factor is desire on the part of managers, both the central federal managers and the site managers. I don't think there's any doubt, you know, that evaluation should be responsive to their needs and if they have a real desire to get on with whatever it is they're supposed to do, they'll apply it. And if the evaluations don't meet their needs, they won't. About as simple as you can get. I think the whole process is far more dependent on the skills of the people who use it than it is on the sort of peripheral issues of politics and resources. He went on, institutions are tough as hell to change. You can't change an institution by coming and doing an evaluation with a halo. Institutions are changed by people. 
in time with a constant plugging away at the purpose you want to accomplish. And if you don't watch out, it slides back. These are the responses. Knowledgeable, thoughtful decision makers and evaluators. And while these comments concern the immediate importance of interested and committed individuals in studies that were actually used, studies that were not used stand out in that there was often an absence of the personal factor. I'm copying here pages from the actual report. One evaluator, who was not sure how his study was used, but suspected it had not been, remarked, quote, I think the client simply wasn't interested, and the whole issue had shifted to other topics. And since we weren't interested in doing it from a research point of view, nobody was interested. We concluded then that this thing called the personal factor is the presence of an identifiable individual or group of people who personally care about the evaluation and the findings it generates. Where such a person or group was present, evaluations were used. Where the personal factor was absent, there was a corresponding marked absence of impact evaluation right out of our report in 1975. The personal factor represents the leadership, interest, enthusiasm, determination, commitment, assertiveness, and caring of specific individual people. These are people who actively seek information and make judgments and reduce the decision uncertainties. They want to increase their ability to predict the outcomes of a programmatic activity and thereby enhance their own discretion as decision makers, policy makers, consumers, program participants, and funders, or whatever role they play. These are the primary users of evaluation. That was our conclusion. For me, this was quite a paragraph of time shift. And I wrote in that report, we did not anticipate this factor, the personal factor, Perhaps we can fault the structural emphasis in much of sociology. Perhaps the problem lies in the evaluation literature, in the reification of rationality and objectivity as the links between research findings and their utilization. Whatever the source of our initial narrow vision, we believe that these findings have profound implications for evaluation research and its utilization. So for lack of a better term, we have called it simply the personal factor. It is made up equal parts of leadership, interest, enthusiasm, determination, commitment, aggressiveness, and caring. Again, where the personal factor emerges, evaluations have an impact. Where it is absent, there is a marked absence of impact. Now, the reason this was a paradigm shift for me is that I had recently completed a doctorate in sociology. And the sociological perspective is that people don't matter. Organizations are made up of positions with roles assigned to them and structures around those roles and positions governed by norms. The people simply are interchangeable cogs in the wheel. They move in and out, in and out of roles. They get socialized into their positions to follow the norms. And so who the individual people are don't make a difference. And yet here we were with person after person in our interviews saying that people did make a difference. And it got me reflecting on my own experience in graduate school where my advisor had made a big difference. In the program I did my dissertation on, an educational innovative program, the charismatic leader of that statewide program made a huge difference in how that program was implemented and in how the evaluation that I did for my dissertation was used. And so it shifted my perspective in a major way. I wrote in that report, social scientists do not generally feel very comfortable with such personal factors. They smack too much of a great person theory of history. And so as soon as the personal factor emerges, the social scientist turns away, presumably to search for the underlying structural conditions to give rise to this irritating personal phenomenon. And perhaps eventually such underlying conditions will be fully identified and operationalized. But for the moment, we want to look directly at the factor itself, the effect of individual people in a system where individuals are supposed to be interchangeable in organizational roles and positions, but where they aren't interchangeable at all.
So this was a major shift for me. This finding was significant enough that it generated our interest in reporting those findings and led to the utilization focused evaluation book. And our findings about the personal factor began to get picked up. In 1980, Lee J. Kronbach, who directed the Stanford evaluation program, and his doctoral students and postdocs put together a book called Toward Reform of Program Evaluation, a tremendous book in which they posited, like Martin Luther, 99 manifesto conditions for reforming evaluation. There are 99 points of reference for how evaluation needed to be reformed. 1980. And number 48, citing our work, was nothing makes a bigger difference in the use of evaluations than the personal factor. The interest of officials in learning from the evaluation and the desire of the evaluator to get attention for what he or she knows. And so I want to explore six implications of the personal factor since we discovered it and that are the foundation for utilization focused evaluation. First, is evaluation understood as a people business? Not just a methods business, not just about analysis and findings, but people. People use information. We've said that there are five critical success factors in whether an evaluation gets used. The five key variables that are absolutely critical in evaluation use, and they are, in order of importance, people. People, 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 people. People use information. Not organizations, not agencies, not programs, but people in those organizations, agencies, and programs. The second implication was the importance of language, how we talk about things. Rodney Hobson, former AEA president, edited a book of new directions for evaluation on how and why language matters, which several of us, and I have an article in that uh, edition, which includes talking about moving from talking about audiences to stakeholders to primary intended users. Notice the connotative difference between doing an evaluation for an audience or doing it for vague stakeholders versus doing it for identifiable primary intended users. And that's what utilization focused evaluation is based on. I see my slides are somewhat messed up here. I go back and forth between six and seven. I actually ended up with seven implications. Um, the third of which is identifying, recruiting, and selecting primary intended users. Uh, honoring the personal factor means identifying and engaging primary intended users, looking for people who are interested in being involved, who are knowledgeable about the program and evaluation needs, who are open to evaluation in the process of learning and improvement, who are connected to important stakeholder constituencies, who are credible in the eyes of other key users and stakeholders, who are teachable about utilization-focused evaluation, and who are committed and available for the interaction throughout the evaluation process. We had this cartoon in an earlier edition of utilization-focused evaluation that shows stakeholders going through a funnel to identify primary intended users. And it's a rather brutal cartoon. Um, so we have abandoned it, but that process it depicts um, is what it's like. You begin with a large group of potential stakeholders and in utilization focused evaluation, identify who the primary intended users are. And that's the group with whom you're engaged throughout the evaluation process. The fourth implication that has become important in subsequent editions from that first book, which focused virtually entirely upon the personal factor, the 1978 edition of Utilization Focused Evaluation. Subsequent editions, we began turning more to that it's not just a matter of identifying, selecting, and recruiting primary intended users, but that they can be nurtured, they can be trained, they can be brought along. It's not a static process. It's a process of engaging with primary intended users to enhancing their interest, enhancing their capacity, 
not just accepting that as a baseline, but building off that baseline to enhance their interest in evaluation based on the utilization-focused evaluation experience. And another major breakthrough in the last couple of editions of utilization-focused evaluation has been applying the personal factor to evaluators. In the early editions, in the early work, it was all about the personal factor applied to primary intended users. But over time, we came to recognize that evaluators have a stake in evaluation. We have a stake that our evaluations get used, and we have a stake in the how we engage with intended users. Bob Stake, one of our great pioneers, wrote an article for the American Journal of Evaluation in 2006 entitled, How Far Dare Evaluators Go in Changing the World? And in that article, Bob, a very solid researcher and evaluator, known for his methodological rigor and, and thinking, cast doubt upon the possibility or desirability of replicability, that any two evaluators would come up with the same results. In research, with the focus on methods, the notion is that any two researchers who apply the same methods would come up with the same results. But Bob, out of his deep experience, had come to realize that who the evaluator is makes a difference. What they bring to the evaluation, their personal interest, their stake in the evaluation, what we've come to call having skin in the game. And so the personal factor applies to the evaluator. Well, in, in the Blue Marble Evaluation book, we really elevated skin in the game to a principle where the evaluators have a stake in the evaluation their values, their methods, the time they devote, the issues that they get engaged with. And so the personal factor applies to evaluators. And a part of what Bob Stake said was that people who commission evaluations, people who engage in evaluations should not expect or think that you'd get the same exact evaluation with two different evaluators because the personal nature of the evaluation enterprise means that who the evaluator is and who the intended users are makes a difference. Finally, there is the interpersonal factor. This is highlighted in Gene King and Steffi Laurie Steffen's book on interactive evaluation practice. Gene King is a longtime colleague here in Minnesota, uh, a utilization focused evaluator, and they emphasize because of this recognition of the role of the evaluator and the intended users working together, that it wasn't just a personal factor, but it was an interactive factor, an interrelationship factor. That evaluation, again, is not just methods-based, but is relationship-based. And the relationship between the evaluator and intended users becomes key. And that then that relationship is based upon engaging with primary intended users. In the evaluation competencies adopted by the American Evaluation Association, one of those five competencies is interpersonal competency, interactive, relationship-based evaluation. And that involves being able to work in human relations and social interactions that ground evaluator effectiveness for professional practice throughout the evaluation. Interpersonal skills include cultural competence, communication, facilitation, and conflict resolution skills, which means being able to facilitate evaluation. And so utilization-focused evaluation is principles-focused. And the principle of the personal factor is to personalize evaluation and that interactive relationship, honor the personal factor, identify and engage with the primary intended users of the evaluation. That's the bedrock, that's the foundation on which all of utilization-focused evaluation is built.